hello everyone welcome back in this video we are going to discuss actions and abstract entity actions we have discussed in many scenario in detail there are different kind of actions are there factory actions non factory actions internal actions the actions can be defined as an instance or global or the actions can trigger during the transactional phase or during the save sequence as well this video we will discuss more about actions interface regarding the importing and exporting parameter of the actions for that we have to discuss little bit about the abstract entity as well so let's get started this is the syntax we use to define the action first we have to tell if your action is internal then you have to tell my action is internal by default all actions are instance and if you want to define the static action then you have to use the static keyword and if you want your action is re repeatable then you have to use this keyword repeatable so whenever you define the action as a repeatable the importing parameter of actions will be having the cid which will differ each time when you trigger this particular action then we have to use action keyword then if you want to define that your action should be enable or disable based on some condition then you have to use the feature control for your action if you want to define some pre checks you want before triggering this action something you want to check that also you can define that pre check method or pre check keyword it we have once we define the pre check keyword then you have to define one pre check method and you have to write that code before triggering the action that method will be triggered then this action will be triggered after that you have to define the authorization you can use authorization what same authorization which you have declared on update global or instance or you don't want to define any authorization then you can use authorization none as well and you don't want to lock your particular entity when you are calling this particular action then you can use lock none as well so these all are the things we have to define or we can say the characteristic of that particular action then you have to give your action name for example we did in our many scenario to accept travel we have used the accept travel keyword reject we have used reject keyword reject travel keyword and then we did for the total price calculation we have used the calc dot price as a action name you can give any name then if you want to define some actional name that also you can define after that we will define the importing and exporting parameter of that particular action there are the some of the important thing we have to make sure whenever we are defining the input parameter or output parameter of that particular action the uh, first we will discuss about the input parameter the input parameter can be flat parameter or it can be the deep parameter as well flat parameter means uh, it is the base you know what is the flat and flat and deep parameter i don't need to explain that one and the flat parameter again it can be the any type of entity type or we can say abstract entity or any other cds entity type or it can be dollar self as well but whenever we are using input parameter as a dollar self we have to make sure your action should be static and action only for the instance actions we can't define the importing parameter or input parameter as a dollar self that is very important thing if you define then you will get the runtime error or if you have used the static to or we can say use strict to keyword in your behavior definition then you will get error there itself if you didn't use you will get the runtime error you can't define input parameter for that particular action or instance action as a dollar self for a static you can define dollar self no need to worry 
Regarding the deep parameter, it can be the simple structure type deep parameter. Deep parameter means you have the sum of the fields and one of the fields are the either internal table or, or structure. In the deep parameter can be type of table. Again, we can have multiple instances of that particular deep structure or we can have simple deep structure as well. So if you have table, you have to define the table in what. Apart from that, something else I have missed, the input parameter, the keyword, we have to use obviously parameter keyword. So it should start with the parameter, your par after the action name, then you have to give the parameter keyword, then you have to define the parameter name. Or we have to define the parameter type. In same way, we can declare the output parameter of particular action as well. When we defining the output parameter, we have to tell, we have to use the result keyword. It will indicate that you have some output parameter. After the result keyword, whatever the type you are using, it will be the field in the internal table. That internal table we have to pass as a result when we write code in the behavior pool. Then we have to fill that particular result table using our code and then we have to return that particular result parameter. Regarding the result parameter, it can be the type of or we can say the output parameter. It can be type of one serious entity. Then you have to use entity keyword and you have to give the serious entity name which can be belong to the same business object or from some other business object as well. Or instead of using serious entity, you want to use the abstract entity. So you no need to define the entity keyword. You can directly define the abstract entity name. And you can give some external name for your abstract entity as well, which will be the which will be visible in your data service. And your result parameter can be the dollar self as well, uh, which means that uh, your result parameter is same type where you have declared the action that same serious entity type. Then your result can be selective. Selective means instead of passing the entire data in your result parameter, you just want, want to pass some keywords only or apart from keywords, you want to pass some of the fields instead of passing entire data. The cardinality is the must thing. We have to de define the cardinality of your result. Uh, without cardinality, we can't define, you will get error as well. So this is all about the output parameter whenever we are declaring the output parameter for that particular action. CDS abstract entity. This is the another kind of CDS view, which is like a structure only. Now you will ask if we have already structure, then why we need the structure, CDS kind of structure. In the normal structure, we can define the normal field, but in the wrap, suppose I want to define apart from the structure field, I want to define the percentage key, percentage TKY, percentage PKY, those kind of field. That is little bit not possible in the normal structure. So that is the reason SAP come up with the CDS abstract entity. Real use case of the CDS abstract entity, I can see as of now in the wrap only which will define only the data type. It will not use to get the data from the database. We can't use as a source in my select statement, those kind of CDS entities, or you can't use as a source in another CDS view, this kind of CDS entity. It just define the skeleton of your types. So that is the reason we can use this CDS abstract entity as a importing exporting parameter of actions or functions or if you are defining any business event for that purpose we can use serious abstract entity there we can use the normal structure type as well but sometime we need to define this special kind of the derived type that time we will go for the serious abstract entity so that is the reason this represent a data type it is not whenever we are active creating this particular CDS abstract entity, it will just generate the metadata. It will not have real time object in the database level. When we create the CDS view, 
it will create the real time data object it will create the view kind of data object which will be used to fetch the data from the database but when you create the cds abstract entity is just the, we are defining some structure that's a skeleton how your when you get the data where it can be stored what what kind of data type we have to use to when we are filling that particular structure i hope i am able to explain so basically it is a like a structure if you want to compare with classical abap little bit we can compare like if you want to compare how you can compare structure and view in classical abap database views or projection view how you will compare that one structure using the structure you can't get the data from the database but using the views you can get the data from the database in the same way we have the cds abstract entity like a structure in the cds framework now these are the transient entity means apart from this cds abstract entity we have the cds customer entities also or we have the cds uh, analytical queries as well those are also as a transient entity using this we can't fetch the data from the database but we can use these all the things in our coding regarding custom entity and the uh, analytical query we can discuss in some other video as well not created is a database object hence no need to define any client handling obviously and these are the abstract entities so using that we can't fetch the data from the database you can't use in the select statement or you can't use in another cds view as a source this particular cds entities but we can use a as a interface of the actions function and business event next thing you can use in abap program also to define your internal tables or your you can say data objects in your abap program and these are the abstract entity must have the same as name as your ddl source code whenever you are defining cds entity as well that time also the ddl source code name and the entity name same in the same way your cds abstract entity and the cds abstract entities ddl source name should be same so this is all about the cds abstract entity how we define the cds abstract entity is the same way how you used to define the cds you you have to use define abstract entity instead of define view entity you have to give your cds abstract entity name you can define the key fields you can define the non key fields you can use the association you can use the composition you can use the two parent association you can define all kind of annotations header level annotations you can define the element level annotation everything you can do whatever you can do in the cds entity but it will define only the skeleton it will not use for fetching the data from the database if you can't execute this views and see the data but you can use this skeleton or structure to define the interface of your actions functions and business events so this is the all about the cds abstract entity each part of this particular draft application we will create core action so in our application list report phase you can see four action button one for the accept travel one for reject travel one for you will not able to see for the calculate total price but you can see for the deduct discount since calculate total price is an internal actions we don't want to display on the front end out of these four actions we have implemented accept travel reject travel and calculate total price in my many scenario as well i will not going to explain in detail but i will quickly write the code or copy paste the code because we have did this already in my many scenario and i will show you but most important since we are creating this draft application so you always have to use the percentage tky field instead of normal key percentage key tky field instead of normal key fields so that is very important thing apart from three actions i will create one additional actions that is called the deduct discount we will be having one additional button on your list report page and object page as soon as you click on that particular button one pop up will appear you have to give some percentage value based on the, that value the booking fee will be 
discounted for example you have 100 rupees currently on booking fee you are giving 5% discount as soon as you click on button pop up will appear you have to fill 5 and click on ok button internally that 5% discount will be calculated and your revised booking fee will be the 95 rupees we want to give some discount for that discount you want to create one button on the screen that we will do using the abstract entity so that is the reason i want to explain this particular deduct discount in detail other things you can refer my minus scenario these all things we will do in my next video before going to that video please subscribe this channel like this video whatever you are feeling comment it down in the comment section not only that please share these videos with others as well with that thank you and happy learning